The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would have I told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the place, and you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So I'm playing ball with Minnie, my big Newfoundland poodle mix dog down here in my backyard. And if you look up and down the street, you see garages, and all of those garages are attached to a house. And if you take a look up there, up that steep hill, that's the back of the house I live. You see, in my neighborhood, there are many houses. There are many dwelling places, and up and down this street, a lot of people live. Come here, Minnie. This is where Minnie likes to play ball. Here we go, watch. Because there's many, there's many dwelling places here. Just like in God's house, there are many dwelling places. There are small dwelling places for tiny little rodents that live right in these bushes here. And then there's bigger dwelling places for the squirrels that live up in the trees. And probably down in the bushes, there's even more dwelling places for where raccoons live and maybe fox, certainly rabbits. We see them all over the place. But there's also dwelling places for us. And the lovely thing about that is, wherever we are, there's a dwelling place for us. If we're right here in the world right now, we have a dwelling place. And you know that because you're living someplace. I have a dwelling place. But also, when we move on to that eternal space where Jesus has gone ahead of us, there's a dwelling place for us as well. I want to say a little bit more about that in a little bit. But first, I just wanted to get in your mind this idea of all the lovely dwelling places we have in the world. We'll talk more in a second. Well, hello. Nice to see you on this great Sunday. Just been outside throwing the tennis ball for my dog, Minnie. She loves chasing it. And there we were in the alley, you recall with the garages on either side. Those are attached to houses where people live. Like you live in a house, like I live in a house. This is part of my house right here, down in the basement. So we're coming together. You know what's so cool is that God gave us all the houses we have. I know, people build houses, right? They get big pieces of wood and they knock them together and they create great places for us to live. And that's terrific. But but God gave us this earth, right? God gave us the trees that grow in the wood. God gave us the cement. God gave us all these things. And God gave us these hands to build these great houses. So we meet two friends today in the gospel story. We meet Philip and we meet Thomas. 
And both Philip and Thomas are a little bit confused when Jesus talks about there is a place for them that Jesus will go and prepare for them. They don't quite understand what that means. And really it means three things. You can count to three, can't you? One, two, three. Three kinds of houses that we understand Jesus to give us. We have that house that we go to when we die, right? It's a great big house uh, out there in heaven where Jesus is. And that's great, right? That's lovely. And he prepares it for us just the way we like it. Uh, with all the things that are lovely in our lives. So we have, we have that house, but we have the second house that Jesus gives us, and that's the house that you and I are sitting in right here, right now, watching this video on your phone or on a computer. Uh, so we have this house that we live in right now. But there's a third house you might not know about. Right? There's a third house that, that God has carved right here. Just take your finger. Just make a little squiggly shape right here, right? Look like an amoeba or an oval or a circle, or you can make a square. I don't care how you do it, but there's this house inside of here. And when we read about that in the Bible, that is called our heart. Now, it's not that heart that goes, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. you feel that heart? Ba -bum, ba -bum. No, it's not that heart. It's, it's a different kind of heart. It has a different meaning. It sort of means like your spirit. And, and there's a shape. And every person that God ever made, God made a shape right there, right? And this shape is, is a God, God shape, but it's a unique God shape. So your, your parents have a different God shape, or your cousins, or your friends, or your siblings. Every me, that's all unique just to us. You got that. This is the third house, and it's right here. And so what we do then is we invite Jesus to come inside that. We invite him to come in. Right? And, and, and we say, come Jesus, be in my heart. Come Jesus, do it with me. Would you do it? Take your hands. Can you do that? Set them right there. Come Jesus. Come Jesus, sit in my heart. Come Jesus, sit in, in my heart. I have a house here for you, Jesus. Come sit in my heart. What do you think of that? Right? So, so, so that's what we, what we do to be living our life like Jesus wants, right? We, we say, come Jesus. So this is what I want you to do when you get up in the morning, when you're still laying there in bed. I want you to put your hands right there in that God-shaped house right inside you. Say, come Jesus into this house. Come Jesus into my heart. And then, and then during the day, let's say you're having a hard day, or you're getting antsy, or you, you feel like being stinky, or you know you need to go sit and have a little space. Sometimes that happens to all of us. When you go over in that space, I want you to take your hands and put them there and say, Come, Jesus, sit in my heart. Say it like five times. Come, Jesus, sit in my heart. That's one. Come, Jesus, sit in my heart. That's two. Come, Jesus, sit in my heart. That's three. Come, Jesus, sit in my heart. Come, Jesus, sit in my heart. Do you know what? That's going to feel a lot better. Whatever's going on, that's going to feel better. So when you're feeling anxious, or you're feeling angry, or you're feeling mad, or you're feeling like you're having a hard time controlling your feelings, I know what that's like. you got to know that I understand when you feel like that way. But just you do this. Come, Jesus. Sit in my heart. And then at night before you go to bed, after you say your prayers, you know, whether you say them by yourself, you say them in your head, or you say them out loud, or you say them with your parents, however you do it, then, then lay there. You put your hands, come Jesus. Sit in my heart. So we have three houses. We have the house eternal in heaven that we'll find out about at some other point. We have the house that we live in right here, right now. Thank you, Jesus. And we have the house right here inside. And, and it's so interesting because Jesus says, um, the words I speak to you, this is what I read to you outside, you remember just a little bit ago. I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me. Right? And these are the works I do. And then Jesus says, believe in me. 
says, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But very truly, if you have a hard time believing in me, then do the good works. Do the Jesus works. Do the works that make you feel good in this inside house, in this place that we call the heart. And when you do that, then you have a good sense of God and how much God loves you. Because this is what I know. God gave you the house you're in. God has a house prepared for you. And God made a house that both you can dwell in together. So practice living in that house. Give it a shot this week. Right? Uh, and know that uh, the God loves you so much. That you are incredibly cared for. I miss seeing you at church, incidentally. You need to know that. Because church is also a house. It's, it's another house that you have. It's a house where the church family gathers. We all come to church. We sit there in the pews, right? And we go down to Sunday school at the everybody hour. And we come up to get communion. That's a house as well. It's a house of worship. That's why they call it a house of worship. Where we come to praise God. I guess that's a fourth house, right? Church is the fourth house that we, that we go to to be in relationship with God. But God's always with you. And even though we can't be in church together right now, I love you. I know God's with you. I know you're extraordinary. Peace upon your soul, and I can't wait until I see you again. So let's now end our time uh, together with a prayer before you go with Naomi uh, to do a craft. So let's bow our heads and fold our hands. Maybe sit up straight in a chair or kneel on the ground or sit uh, crisscross uh, legs together. I'm going to say a prayer. And I'll say it slow. Maybe you can say it with me, or maybe not. Maybe you just listen. Whatever works. Let's begin. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for all those people in my life who love me. Thank you, God, for your love in my life. Thank you for a house to live in. Thank you for a church that prays for me and cares for me. Thank you for the schoolwork that I get to do. Thank you for the ways in which I get to play. Thank you for the food that you've given me. Thank you for the technology at my fingertips. Lord, you are invited into my house. Come into my house today. Thank you for my life. Thank you for the house of the church, the house of my heart, the house in which I dwell, and the house of eternity. You are great God. Amen. All right. We'll see you all soon. Have a great day. Good morning. My name is Naomi, and I'm here to share with you a really easy, simple song that goes along with the reading that we just did from John 14 verses 1 through 14. So I'm hoping that you can help me out with this song. There's three sign language words that are part of it that you can do along with me too. So I'll teach you the words first and then we'll put it all together, okay? So let's start. I am the way. So way is two hands out front and you just kind of motion like this, way. I am the way and the truth. So the truth, you're just pointing from your lips out truth and the life. So life is two thumbs up and you just bring them up. Life. So let's put that together. I am the way and the truth and the life. That's what Jesus said. Uh-huh. Let's try that again. I am the way and the truth and the life. That's what Jesus said. Uh-huh. So that's the first part. And the second part is Without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Duh. Without the life, there is no living. I am the way and the truth and the life. That's what Jesus said. Uh-huh. And that's the whole song. It's super easy and really short. So let's try to put it together from start to finish, okay? I am the way and the truth and the life. That's what Jesus said, uh-huh. I am the way and the truth and the life. 
That's what Jesus said, uh-huh. Without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Duh. Without the life, there is no living. I am the way and the truth and the life. That's what Jesus said, uh-huh. I am the way and the truth and the life. That's what Jesus said, uh-huh. I hope that worked and you did it along with me and you can sing it wherever you want to and share it with the rest of your family and friends.